Hare Krishna. <coughs> Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Thanks for joining. This is the Bhagavad Gita uh, five day course. We are on the day four. Um, we'll, we'll, we have actually completed about 50 to 60 percent of what is there in Bhagavad Gita, but some more portion is there that we need to cover today and tomorrow. We'll try to actually focus on that. Um, again, without much, much other discussion, we'll just get started on that. Uh, first, as usual, this is our actually, um, it's, it's, it's very important that actually we pray to the spiritual masters. Um, I pray to my spiritual master, and then you can actually pray, pray to your gurus uh, so that we actually understand the Bhagavad Gita as well as the Vedic wisdom very clearly, because that's very important. Omak Jana Timiran, the Sikh Jana Jana Shalakaya, Chakshuru Mikta Minata, Sma Shri Guru and Maharshi Chaitanya Manovishtam, Sapita Mena Bhutale, Swayam Rupakada Mahim Dadati Swapatantikam, Mande Hum Shri Guru Shri Utapata Kamalam, Shri Guru Vaishnu Amsha, Shri Rupam Sagrajatam, Sagana Ragratan Vitam Tam Sajivam, Sadvaitam Savadutam, Parijana Satam Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Radha Krishna Pada, Sagana Ravita Shri Vishaka Vitamsha. Krishna, Karuna, Sindhu, Dina, Bandhu, Jagat, Pratek, Kupesha, Kupika, Kanta, Radha, Kanta, Namaste, Tapta, Kanchana, Gaurangi, Radha, Vrindavan, Eshwari, Vishabhanu, Sate, Devi, Pranamami, Hari, Priya, Vanchak, Patar, Vrishra, Kripa, Sindhu, Bhivacha, Patitana, Pavane, Vigya, Vaishna, Vibhya, Namana, Mahanama, Om Vishnu, Padaya, Krishna, Prashtaya, Bhutale, Shumate, Bhakti, Vedanta, Swami, Tamine, Namaste, Sarasati, Devi, Gauravani, Pacharine, Nirvase, Shashun, Navari, Pasha, Tadesha, Tarine, Jaya, Shri Krishna, Chaitanya, Pravunitana, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <clears throat> yeah, so um, I want to start with the, uh, today's class will not be very heavy in text, but I want to actually spend time in answering some of the questions that we all have. Uh, normally, whenever it comes to religion, when it comes to um, um, the Vedic scriptures, Sometimes you actually have some confusions. Um, every scripture talks about their own um, God. Every path actually tells that I'm, my path is the best path and things like that. So how do we really understand what is the right thing to do? How do we know um, that what I'm following is actually the right path? Because everyone tells the same thing. Um, no doctor would actually say, I'm actually a, a doctor who don't know anything, so don't come to me. Everyone will say, I'm actually the best doctor, but can all of them cure everyone? No, that doesn't happen. Um, <clears throat> so how do we actually identify, how do we understand uh, what is the right path? Um, how do we make out that this is actually the right path and things like that? Um, it, it's, it's very, very important for us. us um, it's very important for all of us uh, to spend some time, uh, just like if somebody is getting married, they take a lot of time to understand the boy and the girl before getting married. Otherwise, they'll miss life will be actually a little messy because you're going to actually spend 80,000 meals with that person or you're going to actually spend so much of time with that person. So if that is not the one you are supposed to be with, it will actually create a lot of ruckus in our life, so much of confusion in life. Similarly, even the path to understand who we are where we are coming from, it's always a very tricky thing. How do we really know what is the right path, right? Um, Krishna does actually give some hints about that uh, because in the end of Bhagavad Gita, in the 18th chapter, it does mention that anybody who reads Bhagavad Gita um, will start worshipping me by their intelligence. He does mention that. But is that alone sufficient for us to actually make a decision? How do we actually really classify them? Um, we will try to actually understand some portion of that too and try to actually answer more of questions rather than just go and then try to understand Bhagavad Gita as such because Bhagavad Gita has 700 shlokas and each of these shlokas are quite important and many of these shlokas actually are going to make us, uh, um, our life can actually change because of this particular understanding, right? Uh, so this particular shloka, which is actually from the Gita Mahatmya, it's actually Shankaracharya glorifying, Adi Shankaracharya glorifying Bhagavad Gita he says, Ekam Shastram Devaki Putram Gitam, Eko Devo Devaki Putrayeva, Eko Mantra Sasya Namaniyani, Karma Pyekam Sasya Devasya Seva. So, um, what is he trying to actually say here? He's saying the only Shastra we should actually have is Bhagavad Gita. It's his opinion, Shankaracharya's opinion. The only Deva is the one who came as a son of Devaki. 
he doesn't say it as Krishna because then then people actually question who is that. And of course, Deviki's son is actually Krishna and Balaram also. Um, <clears throat> he gives it in a very cryptic way, but this is what actually it means. There is only one hymn to be sung, which is the names of the son of Deviki. There is only mm -hmm. one duty, the service for this supreme God. This is what actually he mentions, uh, Shankaracharya. Why, why does it mention it like this? Because uh, the Bhagavad Gita is considered as um, <coughs> Gita Upanishad, right? Uh, Gita Upanishad means it's one of the Upanishads. It's considered as one of the Upanishads. Now, the Vedic scriptures are classified into three groups. Uh, this is not there in Bhagavad Gita. I'm actually giving you extra information so that you understand where Bhagavad Gita actually fits in. Um, these Vedic scriptures, all of them are classified into three divisions. Um, one is called the Karmakanda portion. Uh, the second portion is called the Jnana Kanda portion. And the third portion, which is called the Upasana Kanda. Uh, these are the three divisions of the whole Vedic scriptures. The, if you say, what are the different Vedas? You can always say Rig Veda, Ajur Veda, Atharva Veda, and Sama Veda like that. That's more classification based on the shlokas. But on the context, on the information which is there in the Vedas, it can be classified into three groups. Karma Kanda, Jnana Kanda, Upasana Kanda. What does this karma kanda contain? Karma kanda actually contains, as it said, karma means activity, anything to do with our life activities, which is operational activities. For example, I want to actually go buy a new house or I want to actually build a new house. Before building a new house, you need to actually uh, pray to certain gods, uh, certain devatas, and take permission because whenever you are going to actually dig the ground, there may be some worms which actually live there, they'll all get killed. You will actually remove the plants. You will actually destroy the, the trees uh, before building the houses. So many things happen. You'll be killing so many uh, um, living entities, unknowingly or knowingly. Um, so then you need to take permission from them. So you need to do some kind of egya for that. Sacrifice, uh, taking permission from such devatas, like Vastu, Vastu Purusha. And you have to do that, that kind of egyas. So for all those activities for example if you actually are getting married you need to do egg gas you need to actually thank certain people you need to do certain products some explanations are there so all these things um, will all come under the karma kanda portion just like every year we have so many festivals harvest festivals uh, pongal we worship surya dev then we have ganesh chaturthi we have uh, deepavali there's so many festivals which keeps coming for our regular happiness in life so these are all, all under Karma Kanda portion. Um, so 85 to 90 percent of all the shlokas fall under this category. Then 10 percent is actually uh, the Jnana Kanda. What does Jnana Kanda contain? So someone who actually has been in this world for a long time, doing all these different igyas, homas, festivals, they get frustrated. What is this life? This is what actually life all about. Then they'll actually come to a conclusion, okay, then what is beyond this life? I just see what is there. There must be something higher purpose to this life. Then such people will start actually understanding who created all of us? Why did he create all of us? Um, what is it? Where are all these things coming from? How is that so many people are there? Some of all of them actually are living. Someone is getting food. Some of all of them are getting food. Sun rises in the east. There must be some power which is actually controlling all these things. So then they start to understand the knowledge behind all these things, what is really happening? Why is this particular festival done this way? That's called jnana, basically knowledge. Jnana Kanda actually um, talks about why is this like, what is Brahma Jyoti? Uh, how is, who are we in person? Who are we? Are we this body? Are we something more than this? So they all actually come under the Jnana Kanda. That is where you'll find there's nothing to talk about soul or anything in our, any of the festivals that we actually do. Because it's all more to the, I'm this body, I want to actually be happy, my family should be happy, and that's actually the explanation. So that's all called Karma Kanda. Jnana Kanda is more about what is the source of myself, where did I come from, and things like that. So that's about 10%. And the remaining 4 to 5% is actually called Upasana Kanda. Upasaka means worshipping. The Upasana Kanda actually have the, all the Upanishads. The Upanishads really talk about who is the Supreme. Um, where is the Supreme coming from? What are the categories of the Supreme? But all cryptic language, it's not that simple to understand. Uh, for example, Janmadhyas Yataha. So Janmadhyas Yataha means everything come from uh, me. Mean, mean means that the, the 
whatever you call as absolute truth. What is this absolute truth? It doesn't explain. So if there's somebody spends so much time in understanding the Vedic scriptures, especially the Upasana Kanda, then they will actually come to conclusion, oh, these are the things which I actually mentioned and things like that. It's not that simple to understand. This Upanishad, the Gita Upanishads, also fall under the category of the Upasana Kanda. Now, in a library, I have books, 100 books. 85 books is all about Karma Kanda activity. 10 books is all about Jnana Kanda activity. Only five books is all about Upasana activities. Upasana means the Supreme Lord, Bhagavan, and they're worshipping Bhagavan on all those information. Now, if somebody says that they'll actually touch this book, very, very, very rare. Unless somebody actually takes it and then markets it out, say, this is what it is, this is the most important thing, please take it on your own, you will never be able to come to that kind of conclusion. That's why you'll see in the world, not many people actually really is interested to understand what is in Bhagavad Gita. Um, because the Bhagavad Gita actually has everything that is really required for us to understand. There's nothing else more than that which is required. Shankaracharya's opinion is like that, saying that because this actually has the essence of everything which is there in the Upanishads, this is sufficient for us to come to all conclusion. So he mentions it like that. Now, today's class is going to be focused on very, very simple slides. Uh, it's going to talk about what is devotional service. Um, what does God consider as devotion service? Because we may actually do bhakti, we may do actually, we can, we can show affection to our, our um, fellow people or our own family or general population or even, even animals. Is that considered as bhakti? We have to understand that. So we'll try to understand what is that devotion service. Then the material nature that we see around, it conditions us all the time. We don't realize that. For example, if you sit for some time, your body actually starts aching. Um, Something is not actually okay. So you need to understand what is material nature? Why do I behave in a particular fashion? I'm happy right now. So I go outside, two people are fighting. Uh, they're scolding left, right and center. You go near them. You also get agitated sometimes. Like you also feel like scolding somebody or you get scared. Something happens. Why does it really happen, right? How is this material nature working? We'll try to understand that. Uh, the third is the demonian, divine and demoniac qualities. What is considered as divine quality? What is considered as demoniac quality? Uh, Krishna says the divine qualities, if you cultivate, it will lead you to the path of liberation. Liberation means moksha. Moksha uh, means that you will not be controlled by the material modes. You will be free. You can do whatever you want to do like that. Then the divisions of faith. Um, why does different people have different faith? I sometimes actually I say Krishna is the supreme person I've got it. And, and then not everyone can actually accept it. No, I feel Lord Shiva is the supreme or Durga Devi is the supreme. So we all have different faiths. So what are these faiths which actually are mentioned? So we'll try to understand that. Okay, so um, with that, a quick recap of what we did because we spoke a lot in the last class. I want to make sure that we get the, just a glimpse of it. Uh, we discussed about the most confidential knowledge, which is the Supreme is actually a person. We have to understand who is this person. And that's, that's the first aspect. And we also uh, read the definition of Bhagavan. Who is Bhagavan? Or, how do you actually define a Bhagavan? Um, Bhagga means opulence. Van means one who possesses those opulence. The six opulences we saw. Then um, there are many things which actually discussed. And apart from that, we also discussed about pure devotional service. Devotional service is one, um, but pure devotional service is the topmost level of devotional service. What, what, what did we really discuss? Devotional service means bhakti. Bhakti is actually uh, an affectionate, loving service the jiva offers to Bhagavan. That's called bhakti. It is not actually for offering to another jiva. For example, I cannot actually show bhakti to another living entity. I have to show it to only the supreme living entity. That's the definition of bhakti. Bhakti is a relationship, loving relationship between bhakta and Bhagavan. Right? Now, <clears throat> if you don't actually have that understanding, then it's not called as pure devotional service. It will be actually a um, alloyed or mixed devotion service and such mixed devotion service is actually not glorified in the Shastras. Now we also saw that although all this information is there in the, in the Vedic scriptures, uh, not everyone will actually be accepting it. Manushka nam sasreshu kashti yetit siddhe yetatam api siddha nam kashin maam vetitatvataha. Krishna is telling of thousands among men, hardly a few will be interested to understand this knowledge. Not everyone will be interested in understanding knowledge. Why they will not be interested in understanding this knowledge? Because they are still not hungry for this. Just like 
um, if we are actually um, going to a bakery, then I'm actually making very nice foodstuffs there. I mean, like the bun or the bread actually is getting baked. It's getting baked, and you get the smell of it. Um, when you actually get the smell of it, you feel like eating it. But if you already eaten so much, then that that whole thing you not feel hungry to eat that that uh, the the bakery items, right? Uh, but if you are really hungry and you actually go nearby, it'll actually catch you. Come come and eat. So you'll feel like actually something so that hunger has to come for us the hunger to understand the supreme what is the goal of life all these things are very important that's the reason in the olden days all the children including women and men were sent to gurukul so in the gurukul they will actually train people on the goal of life after that when they're actually older they can actually go out and then do what they want to do but they won't forget the goal of life whatever said and then they will try to practice uh, the goal of life in their life in their lives um, along with whatever has to be done as part of uh, living in this world, right? <clears throat> but unfortunately, that kind of uh, setup is not there today. The children get, um, even when I was actually trying, um, studying 30 years back, uh, we used to have moral sense and things like that. Some Nowadays, these are not there. It's like more or less getting into the, the industrial work kind of culture. They learn a lot more than us, but then none of them actually are going to help them to keep themselves calm, right? So. So that's actually the issue that we need to actually address on. We have to understand what the scriptures are talking about. You will always find any place, um, especially when, when spirituality is being spoken about, in the beginning, there'll be so many people who will be interested to know. As they go on, actually everything will drop off. Why? Because they don't have the hunger to actually take it. You need to be hungry to get out of this cycle of birth. And only then actually, Krishna will actually reveal all this to us. Till then, he will not reveal it to us. Okay. With that, we had this question yesterday. We did actually discuss this. So many people talking about so many things. Whom do I follow? It's very difficult to actually come to any conclusion. So how do I understand this? So this question is not new. This question has been there eternally. Just like human beings have been there all along in the material world. All of them will get the same kind of questions. Um, same kind of mentality everyone has. The only thing which changes is the dress culture that keeps changing the footsteps keeps changing but people are, as such human beings men women they remain the same their desire their attraction between each other all those things remain the same so whom do we follow because everyone actually seems to be telling something which is which sometimes some people come and tell this portion this path actually will relieve you from all stress you'll be happy please follow this path okay somebody will come and tell you Okay, if you follow this path, you'll get a lot of money, you'll get peace and you'll get happiness, your family will be good, all diseases will be eradicated and things like that. So like this, there are many, many people will come and tell many, many things. So how do we follow all those things? So Dharmaraj, Yudhishthira Maharaj was asked this question in uh, by the, the Pandavas. What do we understand? All the sages were there. Dharmaraj actually responded this. It's a pretty interesting shloka. This is there in the Mahabharata. He says, Tarko apratishta shrutayo vibhinna nasa rishiryasya matam na vrinnam dharmasya tatvam nihitam guhayam mahajano enagatasa pantaha. So he says, dry arguments are inconclusive because I will say this is the best, another thing the best, but that's not going to be conclusive. A great personality whose opinion does not differ from others is not considered a great sage. Um, Munis, all the Muni will tell many, many things. Every Muni or a sage will tell different things that this is the best, that is the best. Then that is also because if he doesn't differ from others' opinion, then he's not called as a Muni, right? Simply by studying the Vedas, which are variegated, means every Vedas, for example, um, in every part of the Vedas, Vedas actually the Shrutis and Smritis, the Puranas, every Purana talks that I'm this God is better, and that God is better, and things like that. You read. Any Purana, that Purana will glorify who it's meant for. Shiva Purana will glorify Shiva. So in that, actually, you'll say Shiva actually gave all blessings to Vishnu to become very powerful. Devi Bhagavatam, if you go and ask, Devi will say, because of her own dish, everything else came, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva were able to do. All these things will be there. So it's not easy to understand. One cannot come to the right path by which religious principles are understood. This is what Jishraman is telling. The solid truth of religious principles is hidden in the heart of an unadulterated, self realized person. Consequently, as the Shastras confirm, one should accept whatever progressive path the Mahajanas advocate. Now, <clears throat> one level 
we are actually proceeded okay now i should not actually understand everything just by looking at the vedas i need to actually approach a mahajana and then understand it from the mahajana now how do i identify the mahajana that information is not there in bhagavad gita that is there in shrimad bhagavatam in the shrimad bhagavatam Prahlad Maharaj actually talks about who Mahajana is. So, <clears throat> and, and then this is actually explained why Yudhishthira Maharaj's father, who is Yudhishthira Maharaj's father? Uh, it's actually not Pandu. It's actually Dharmaraj himself. Dharmaraj is Yamaraj. Yamaraj is actually considered Dharmaraj because he actually maintains Dharma in this world, in, in this creation. Now, Dharmaraj actually is explaining that there are 12 personalities who are, who are called as Mahajanas. Hmm? There are 12 people who are called as Mahajanas and these people know perfectly well what is the ultimate truth. And these people are not like us. They are actually exalted personalities. Now, who are these 12 people? Swayambhu, Narada, Shambhu. <clears throat> hmm? So this is Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Swayambhu Manu, Kapila, Bali Maharaj, <clears throat> Bhishma Dev. Right? So like this, there are 12 personalities. Shukadev Goswami. Um, Shukadeva Goswami is Vyasadeva's son, right? So these personalities, the 12 personalities are there, including Yamaraj himself, they know the truth. And all the ultimate truth is actually hidden in their heart. And they have given all their opinions. That book is called Srimad Bhagavatam. The Bhagavata Purana talks about these 12 personalities who know the ultimate truth. So Yudhishthira Maharaj actually says, one should actually really follow whatever they are saying, whatever Lord Shiva is telling. We should not actually hear about what others tell about Lord Shiva. We should always hear about what Lord Shiva is telling to us. So that information is actually perfect information. We can actually really follow that. So if you get to get to understand what is in Bhagavata Purana, then we will not be disturbed. We will not be confused about what should I follow. Now, <clears throat> all these 12 personalities actually say that Bhakti Yoga is actually the easiest process and the ultimate process to um, enter into the kingdom of God. Now, what, are, what is Bhakti Yoga? The Bhakti Yoga is actually explained by Prahlad Maharaj in the Bhagavatam. This is not in the Bhagavad Gita directly. While Krishna says, just remember me and serve me, he doesn't explain what are the different angas or limbs of Bhakti Yoga. How do we actually follow Bhakti Yoga? Right? Uh, he says, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnoho Smaranam Pata Sevanam Archanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atmani Vedanam Iti Pumstar Pita Vishnu Bhakti Chenava Lakshana Kriyeta Bhagavat Adha Tanmanye Ditam Uttamam. So he's saying that there are nine processes or nine angas of bhakti. If one person actually picks up even one area or all the nine little little, then they'll actually get into perfection. So what are these? Let's actually see the nine one just to understand what they are. Shravanam, meaning hearing, um, hearing about Krishna, hearing about the Supreme, hearing about the Absolute Truth. This is called Shravanam. Then Kirtanam. Kirtanam means chanting or glorifying the holy names of the Supreme or um, whatever I'm actually talking, you are hearing, right? This is also called Kirtanam. I'm talking about the Supreme Lord's instruction in Bhagavad Gita. So that's all called as Kirtanam. Then Smaranam, remembering. Um, remembering the form of the Lord, we go to Tirupati, we go to different temples, we see the form of the Lord, and then we come back and then remember that form. That is also called as remembering. It's remembering the different forms of the Lord. Pada Sevanam. Pada Sevanam means uh, serving the lotus feet of the Lord. Um, of course, we don't do that here so easily because um, it's not practically possible in this world unless we have a deity of the Lord. When you actually take care of the deity, when you actually worship the deity of the Lord, deity means Vigraha means uh, in the modern terminology they say as idol uh, but the supreme is not called as idol idol means something which is the, like a um, bombay or at all but this is not at all this is actually the lord himself residing so when you serve the lotus feet of the lord that's called father sevanam then archanam doing deity worship you actually are worshiping the lord by showing incense lamps and things like that so that's called archanam then mandanam mandanam means um, offering prayers to the lord <coughs> That prayers actually, all the different acharyas have sung many, many acharyas like Purandar Das, Kanaka Das, and many other Tulsi Das, they all actually have sung <coughs> many uh, songs in glorifying Lord Ram, Lord Krishna. So, singing those prayers, uh, glorifying the Lord, which is called Vandanam. 
then dasyam dasyam means being a servant of the lord like hanuman ready to do any 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 service for the lord if the lord is expecting us to actually come and see me in the temple they are willing to come so that's called actually dasyam then sakyam sakyam really means friendship uh, like a friend considering the supreme lord as a friend of yours so when you actually consider the supreme lord as a friend of yours then you reveal your heart how do you actually talk to your friend friend means not a um, what do you call a professional friend because friend friendship itself actually has many categories like mitra bandhu suhrut like that right so um, i'm not going to get into the sanskrit aspect of it but what friendship really means is i consider somebody very close to my heart i have this problem um, i'm i have a confidential friend here so i actually reveal my heart to this person so that person also will start reciprocating with that so that's called sakyam considering the supreme lord as the best friend saying that i have this problem my lord how do you overcome this and then he will actually give you a solution some more he will actually take care of you but you also find good things like you get a good fruit you actually offer him good fruit so you treat him as a person and if you treat him as a best friend he will also reciprocate this is not actually done theoretically it has to be done practically then it will work then the last one is actually atmanivedanam atmanivedanam means completely surrendering to the lord saying that whatever you want to do with me lord you do it i will accept it because i know you are my ever well wisher you always wish well um, you will never actually put me into um, a kind of a dangerous situation you will always protect me so i completely accept you so these are actually the nine um, different angas of bhakti so if someone actually has dedicated his life um dedicated his life doesn't mean that you have to actually shave your head and then leave everything your family responsibility and then go and sit in a temple and do no you can stay in wherever whatever position you are in but we just make the goal of life as the supreme lord and by hearing more and doing little bit of all these things whenever we get time slowly actually we can come to a stage wherein we are dedicated in following these principles so krishna tells if somebody actually follows all these things in a dedicated way such a person is very 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 dear to me right so he mentions that in the 12th 12th chapter of bhagavad gita so this is actually the nine rims of bhakti we have seen so next one would be the modes of material nature which actually has been conditioning us a lot um <clears throat> how does it condition us we are unknowingly becoming angry we see something somebody actually has put a lot of salt in our food we become angry at the person who cooked um but they may not have done it intentionally so all these things seems to be happening without our knowledge sometimes we actually are walking on the roads we trip um but we'll be thinking will we plan to go on trip but some of we actually tripped who has actually is making this happen these are actually the modes of material nature every one of us in the material world including the devatas um are all controlled by these modes of nature what are these modes of nature like let's try to understand so these modes of material nature are considered as the external energy of the supreme lord they are called the maya shakti maya shakti really means the supreme lord actually has three energies one is called antaranga shakti bahiranga shakti and tatashta shakti this external energy is called bahiranga shakti bahiranga means external uh, and this shakti are it's represented by durga devi parvati actually is the owner of this energy that way sometimes not sometimes most of the time we all know that shakti or or uh, durga devi or parvati is considered as vishnu's sister um <clears throat> so that's actually mentioned and we all most of us actually know that that's true that uh, at least we have heard in the, in the in our in our um, day to day life that vishnu is actually the brother of uh, parvati devi so this extra energy is one of the energies of the supreme lord now what are these modes these modes are classified into three portions called sattva guna raja guna and tamo guna guna means rope sattva guna means a rope which is actually made of goodness rajas means passion and tamo means uh, ignorance now you can see in the picture on the right side that the three personalities um, they actually are, are making two people um, dance like a puppet they are fighting with each other but then It, it appears like somebody is actually pulling the strings so that they are behaving like that and that's a fact krishna actually mentions that in the bhagavad gita about it and then these three modes or three ropes uh, influences all the living entities in a competitive way sometimes when you get up early in the morning after having a good sleep 
you feel very sattvic in the sense that sattva guna is very prominent you don't feel like cheating people you don't feel like uh, scolding someone you want to actually be peaceful when you get up in the morning sometimes people actually put suprabhata something like that you want to be peaceful in the morning you don't want to get up and then do something horrible in the morning right rajas means which is passionate we'll see all the qualities little little more deeper uh, in the next slide but there's competition among among these gunas so these gunas will actually influence us depending on um, who we associate with so if someone is a sattvic person their behavior or the way they speak and everything will be sattvic so when you associate with that person you will feel little peaceful you won't feel like um, very agitated but if you go with a rajasic person you feel these people are very passionate and they'll scold they are they are ready to actually put you into trouble right they don't bother about others they just want to win all the time so that kind of people right so we'll see all these things krishna mentions that in the bhagavad gita that this material nature whatever we are calling about is working under my direction oksana kunti and it is producing all moving and unmoving beings by its rule this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again um see how much how much uh, information is there in the bhagavad gita it's so wonderful because we can understand whatever is happening in this world it's all actually controlled by the material nature and this material nature is actually under the control of the supreme lord now this world is created and annihilated again and again right there's a there's a rule book which is given to material nature the material nature works like that and if you are part of if you stay in the material world again and again the world is created stays for some time and then annihilated of course the time duration is very very big it doesn't happen in our lifetime it's very 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 big but it still happens again and again so we keep doing the same thing we are born we stay in the family we actually have a family life one day we die again after that we get into another family it could be animal family or human being family again we get into another family again we continue this so this is time immemorial there is no limit to what is happening in this world it keeps happening again and again and again and again so an intelligent person understands this truth and tries to get out of this that's actually the information that krishna is asking us to understand right this is actually the modes of material nature some more qualities we can actually understand sattva guna means which I, which is more knowledgeable which actually gives us more um, good knowledge in the sense it could be anything it could be building a house or anything but it's it's not to cheat people and things like that it's more like very uh, uh, happy kind of a, a knowledge that we gain uh, when it comes to that the main prominent uh, quality of rajaguna is unlimited desires i want to do this i want to be one of the um the greatest person i want to be the head of a company all these things like that that unlimited desires are there it's actually because the rajaguna is influencing us like that tamaguna means madness in the sense uh, they become completely illogical they can't actually have a plan or anything like that they'll just think that i want to do this and then they do it then they suffer a lot right so and coming to the uh, activities that they really do in, in the satvaguna any activity which is free from sin that kind of activity activity only they will do they will not actually be engaged in anything sinful that means they know the shastras very well they understand what should be done what should not be done right in rajaguna people um, are more interested in fruity activity fruity activity is actually commonly um, mentioned in the shastras what is this fruity activity it's it's a fruit i understand fruity activity means what uh, what it really means is you do an action you are expecting some results out of that action some fruits that you need now what is the uh, fruit of this activity when you actually work off in the office very hard you expect the salary to come if they don't give you a salary then you won't work there that's called fruity activity any activity that you really do and then you are expecting something in return it's called a fruity activity that's somebody who actually is working on a fruity activity platform they are influenced by the jukuna then tamoguna tamoguna means uh, when it comes to work they procrastinate it they very lazy saying that i'll do it tomorrow i don't feel like doing it today it's so boring so that kind of mentality actually uh, is is uh, influenced by tamoguna then when it comes to um, what you call uh, what is the happiness defined by these modes right someone who is actually influenced by satoguna their happiness is uh, uh, they are very happy because they are getting good knowledge they are they are very brahmanical in sense they are very the real brahmanical not the caste brahmana those who are born in brahmanas that doesn't mean that they are brahmanical someone who is practicing somebody might be born in a 
a different family. They may not be born in a Brahminical family, but by nature, they are very happy. By nature, they are contented with whatever they are getting. So that happiness is actually very peaceful happiness. That's Sattva Guna. Then the Rajaguna is basically the main happiness is defined by the attraction between man and woman. Such happiness between man and woman is considered as Rajaguna. <clears throat> Rajaguna means the, the influence of this passion um, is that the attraction between man and woman. The world activity is done because the attraction of man and woman is still there. That's the reason they actually are working. Otherwise, they will not actually work. They'll, like sit, they'll feel disappointed and then sit quietly or they'll drink. Tamaguna people, what do they really do? What is their happiness? Sleeping. If you get a chance to sleep, they'll feel very happy. Oh, ma, we got some time to sleep. So they feel very, very happy or they're intoxicated. They dream a lot that they want to actually become this, they want to become that, but they will not do any activity. They are influenced by Tamaguna. Now, if you go and associate with somebody, the list goes on. For example, even vegetables that we eat, these vegetables actually are influenced by different gunas. Um, some vegetables actually are very really, are going to actually increase our sattvic lifestyle. Some vegetables will actually force you to become more passionate. Some of them will actually force you to become very tamasic. They'll make you sleep a lot and very lazy, right? So these are actually mentioned by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. I just gave a glimpse of what is actually uh, mentioned there. It's there in the chapter. The chapter itself is called as mode of modes of material nature, right? The next aspect is okay. All the all the goals, all the Vedas that we have. Um, what is the goal of understanding the Veda? Because we have so much of the classification of Veda, there are these different um, aspects of Veda, which is the Karma Kanda, Jnana Kanda, Upasana Kanda. But of all these things, what is that? Who, what is the goal of understanding the Vedas? If somebody says, tell me the goal of Vedas, um, what should we really respond back? And this answer Krishna gives, because Arjuna asks this, this question to Krishna, and Krishna responds, there's actually the Shloka itself, which is actually in the 15th chapter, Krishna says, I am seated in everyone's heart. That is, we saw in, in, the, in the previous sessions that Krishna is seated as Paramatma in heart. So he knows what we are thinking, what we are doing. Even if you actually say, I'm going to kill somebody, he knows that I'm going to kill somebody. He verifies whether this person deserves that activity. Can he do that activity? If he doesn't deserve that activity, they will not be able to do it. Right? So, so he's seated in heart. And from him, from me comes remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. Um, because of Krishna, we are able to remember everything. Suddenly, um, we want to do something, then the Lord makes us remember that, right? Because when you sleep in the night, you forget everything. When you wake up in the morning, again, you remember, oh, okay, I'm here, I'm supposed to do this. I'm actually, I'm working in so-and-so company, and this is my mother, this is my father, this is my spouse. How do we know all these things? Because Krishna is actually making us remember that. <clears throat> Otherwise, we will not be able to remember all these things. So he says that from me comes remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. Because forgetfulness also is important. Because imagine you are cheated royally um, by somebody or some some activity that you have done. You are loyally cheated. You have failed in an exam, and you give you so much of pain in life. And you keep remembering that how difficult it will be to follow life. So the Supreme Lord actually purposefully makes us forget that because of His uh, power, we forget everything. So we feel peaceful because anybody reminds you about that activity which happened in the past, you feel very very bad. Right? But this all comes from the Supreme Lord. By all the Vedas, I am to be known, he says. If you say, I have to read all the Vedas, what is supposed to be known? I am to be known, he says. Indeed, I am the compiler of the Vedanta. I only wrote the Vedanta and I am the knower of Vedas too. I know what is there in the Vedas because I only actually wrote all the Vedas. So the Supreme Lord has given the Vedas so that we come to this conclusion. First, we came here in the material world to enjoy. Okay, enjoy, independent of God. Fine. Once you are frustrated, you start looking out and see what is this, where did it come from and things like that. Then even after that, you go a little deeper, you come to the Upasana stage. In the Upasana stage, you understand, okay, there's a Supreme Lord and I have an eternal relationship with them. I need to actually get back to that place. So all these things in a gist, Krishna says, I am the goal of Vedas. I am to be known. So if you know Krishna, that means you know the Vedas. Uh, that's actually the, the conclusion on that. So there's actually a chapter on divine and demoniac qualities that uh, Krishna, uh, Arjuna wants to know, um, you are told all these things, it's fine, but how do I understand somebody is actually a divine personality or a demoniac personality? Demoniac personality doesn't mean that you need to actually have a horn and your, your teeth should be very sharp coming outside with the nose in front. No, not necessarily. Your mentality actually uh, is sufficient to decide whether you are a demoniac or a divine personality. So what is that? So Krishna tells, 
he gives one shloka on all the the qualities of a divine person he says fearlessness okay the, these people will not be afraid of anything if you are, you are a divine person you will not be afraid of anything if you are afraid then he says you are not a divine person then purification of one's existence cultivation of spiritual knowledge what is spiritual knowledge understanding the spiritual aspect of everything is called spiritual knowledge um even any activity we do for example we do a home at home um a yagya at home and that's considered as a ritual if you don't understand the spirit behind why i am doing that activity it's considered as a ritual it's a material activity just something you are taking and putting in a fire and it's burning even the the children actually do sometimes after the the deepavali festival they actually go collect all this and then do a bonfire what is the difference then it's the same you fire you are putting everything into fire right just burning such activity is a ritual activity but if you understand the spirit behind why am i doing that activity who am i pleasing who told me to do all this thing that's called cultivation of spiritual knowledge then charity giving charity to the right cause right and self control performance of sacrifice study of the vedas like studying this bhagavad gita regularly all these things are divine qualities he says austerity simplicity non violence truthfulness freedom from anger renunciation tranquility aversion to fault finding compassion for all living entities uh, freedom from covetousness covetousness means uh, grabbing thinking about how do i grab this this or that right sometimes we actually have the desire of taking it from somebody and then saying it's mine right um, as children we do it when you become old it may not happen but that nevertheless actually the lord mentions that gentleness modesty steady determination vigor forgiveness fortitude cleanliness and freedom from envy and from the passion for honor these transcendental qualities of sanah bharata belong to godly men endowed with divine nature he says those who actually are divine have these qualities he says if you read all these things that i i am a mere i don't even belong to this to this category how do we cultivate all these things that we'll see in the in the in the in the future but it's possible to cultivate all these things why because we are not this body we are the spirit soul and spirit soul by nature has these qualities because we are part and parcel of krishna we are part and parcel of the supreme the supreme has these qualities because the supreme has these qualities we also have these qualities but unfortunately because we are inside this body we we are not able to realize that we have these qualities but when you start going toward that direction all these qualities automatically come will manifest on an, on our person so these are the divine qualities what are the demoniac qualities he says he says many things but then these are something that's there in the in the chapter of divine and demoniac qualities pride arrogance conceit anger harshness and ignorance ignorance means you don't even know who is god and things like that it's considered as a um it's considered as a demoniac quality these qualities belong to those of demoniac nature of sanatata so very interesting to understand that the lord is actually telling us what of course he tells arjuna you don't have to worry about this because you don't belong to this category you are actually a divine personality but in general um it's very difficult for us to understand that many of these things we have we become angry uh, sometimes we are arrogant sometimes we become very proud saying that oh i have this i have nobody else actually has done like this i have done it and ignorance is bliss for us right so we become very happy as long as i don't know this the moment i tell you there is god and you have to surrender and all hey, i better actually avoid all this so that's ignorance that's being a demonic personality this is actually the explanation the lord gives then those who are demoniac do not know what is to be done and what is not to be done neither cleanliness nor proper behavior nor truth is found in them because they don't have any principles in life to follow um, they just think i want to do this i do it all the movies in bollywood talk about this just do one life is what you have just do it otherwise you will miss out on everything these are all completely demonic um, activity because we are eternal personalities we don't live for just one lifetime we live eternally um so if you don't understand that the next life will be miserable for all of us uh, unfortunately nobody knows the lord says a demoniac do not know what is to be done what if they have not learned anything in the shastras how do you know what has to be done they don't know what is to be done they don't know what is not to be done so they don't have uh, a proper cleanliness also um they just um do whatever is necessary for them as long as actually especially college students i i actually when i was in a hostel i i used to feel this actually people eat anything and everything garbage also you give them they eat it and then five people will drink the same chai and one dog also will come and say for me it's not there 
so you actually pour a little bit for the dog also and the dog also will eat that sorry drink that um so that that's a, that's a uh, what do you call very interesting thing but this is all demonic qualities this is not being a divine personality right so this actually the, the whole chapter actually explains i just picked up a few shlokas uh, in this particular chapter uh, on what krishna says krishna actually explains some more things saying that how these people actually thinks that this world belongs to me how do i get everyone under my control so uh, such personalities are actually very very dangerous and so the lord personally puts them into demoniac families uh, because the question would uh, would come to us is okay i have heard about krishna what about somebody who was born in west indies or um, some african nation how do they understand lord says because they are very envious of me i personally actually put them into a womb of mothers who have no clue about the vedic wisdom they can't understand vedic wisdom so easily um so because they are demoniac they want to be demoniac they want to actually forget god so stay there in that kind of uh, environment um suffer life they are into so much of depression and things like that they will never actually come to the conclusion so easily um but even if india tries to follow such kind of uh, western behavior they will also actually be very demoniac in nature as they go along we can actually see how this corona virus stuff is actually disturbing people so much it's all demoniac especially very very demoniac as long as we are in the demoniac lifestyle these are going to actually disturb us very much when you actually cultivate your divine lifestyle these things won't actually affect us at all it, it doesn't do anything to such kind of personalities um <clears throat> yeah so this is another important topic that we actually have here the divisions of faith right everyone don't have the same faith because of their upbringing right every lifetime many many lifetime we have picked up different qualities and every lifetime we exhibit some uh, faith different people will uh, demonstrate different faith depending on their experience because by birth we don't have all these things by cultivation association we we pick up those faith now krishna actually is telling like this he's saying men in the mode of goodness those who are influenced by goodness will worship the demigods the devatas they are nice people because they are actually worshiping the devatas those in the mode of passion worship the demons um i'll give examples to this and then those in the mode of ignorance worship ghosts and spirits he says we don't see these kind of things very normally we actually understand normally people actually do worship uh, uh, what you, uh, the devatas the demigods he doesn't mention himself um, krishna does not mention that uh, who will actually worship him he doesn't mention in this shloka he mentioned in a separate shloka um why does he not actually mention about himself here because those who want to actually get out of cycle of birth and death who are not in, who don't want to be in the material world only they will worship vishnu or krishna others will actually worship the devatas because worshiping devatas you will get what you are actually asking for it's very easy to get it from the devatas <clears throat> then the mode of passion worship the demons who are these demons actually are they Do we see demons in this world? We do demons in this world. Demon did not be by by definition. Demonic personality is not someone who actually has a very ugly looking face. They can be very beautiful. They can look very smart, but their mentality is all very demonic in nature. What do they really do? They want to be God. They want to actually control the entire world. These are very demonic personalities. And then there will be some people who will actually um, vote for them or elect them or. follow such kind of people like hitler is a great example of being a demonic personality he he killed so many people but even today some people actually like hitler's lifestyle the way he actually was controlling everyone right um <clears throat> so those are kind of examples for demons and those in the mode of ignorance those who are influenced by ignorance worship ghosts and spirits he says uh, who, if you see this the, the bottom one they actually sacrifice uh, animals in the night and then invite ghosts uh, and then and then what do they really do their whole uh, intention is not to actually get money and things like that the intention is to destroy somebody else you say go and attack such a person don't uh, go and kill that person make them miserable haunt them so that they can actually have a peaceful life so this is actually the um, people in the mode of ignorance worship them um so what really happens such a people will go and attack the other other personalities who will they attack those in the mode of goodness will not actually be attacked but those in the mode of uh, ignorance and those who are in the mode of passion will be attacked by this ghosts and spirits um those who are in the mode of goodness who are worshiping the devatas in a sincere way um they will not be actually disturbed by these ghosts and spirits because the devatas will actually be powerful enough to 
protect their devotees. However, um, the next sloka Krishna actually mentions, but those who are really, really interested to get out of the cycle of birth and death will ignore all these things, will start worshipping me because I am above the modes of nature. Even my devotees are above the modes of nature because they are not controlled by material nature at all. So such personalities who want to get out of the cycle of birth and death, they will actually worship me, Arjuna says. Right? So this is actually a simple explanation. There are a lot of shokas to understand um, because in one hour, it's not easy to actually cover everything. I'm just giving you a glimpse of um, what kind of people with what faith will worship whom like that. Okay, so there is also the, in the same chapter, actually, there is uh, the foods that we actually eat. It's all in the mode of goodness, passion, and ignorance. So if you eat the food, which is in the mode of goodness, you will naturally behave like a person in the mode of goodness. Um, those who are um, eating food in the mode of passion and ignorance, they will behave like that. They are influenced like that. It's like, I have three doors. I open one door and I go inside. Then you have to do activity of that nature. If you associate with someone in the mode of um, passion, you will also become passionate in life. If you are associated with somebody in the mode of goodness, you will also become uh, somewhat influenced by their behavior. And you will also become very peaceful. And they, the activities that they do, you, you will be inspired to do that activities. So it's all interlinked, right? Example, foods dear to those in the mode of goodness increase the duration of life, purify one's existence, and give strength, health, happiness, and satisfaction. Such foods are juicy, fatty, wholesome, and pleasing to the heart. Um, <clears throat> interesting to know. I'll, I'll actually, I'll show the, all the three things and then we'll actually decide what it is. Those and the, and the passionate food, foods that are too bitter, too sour, salty, hot, pungent, dry, and burning are dear to those in the mode of passion. Such foods cause distress, misery, and disease. Then food prepared more than three hours before being eaten, food that is tasteless, decomposed and putrid, uh, putrid means spoiled, and food consisting of remnants and untouchable things is dear to those in the mode of darkness. Darkness means ignorance, basically. Um, we can actually see the kind of food that we eat, it influences us to behave in a particular way. The mode of goodness food if we eat, then the mode of goodness rope will actually condition us in that particular fashion. The if you actually eat very passionate food in the sense when I say passionate food means which is very dry, pungent, um, very burning. Like I mean, when you're eating itself, you will eyes will water so much, and then you feel like ah, it's like it's, you eat that kind of food. Such food actually will influence <clears throat> the passionate mode to be um, acting upon you. Then you will actually think like that, right? Um, and then those which actually three hours before, I mean, you cook something 10 days before, keep it in the fridge, take it and again eat it. These are all actually considered as um, decomposed. So you will also be influenced by mode of ignorance. So, so you can understand like what state of uh, life we are le leading today in this world, right? From a Shastric perspective, in the olden days, people actually were uh, having very Sattvic lifestyle. So they were more peaceful. Um, they did not create so many unwanted necessities. Why were they satisfied? That's the reason. They didn't want to actually rule the world or anything like that. There may be one or two people who are like Hirene Kashyap or Kamsa were there. But in general, they were not like that. They were very pretty happy about um, this. Unfortunately, the Western world came and then told us all these things. You no, know, you people are dying early in life and things like that. And anyways, that's a different conversation. But, but this, it can give us a glimpse of what food we are supposed to eat. Now, these are all in the mode of goodness, passion, and ignorance. Now, if I offer food to the Lord, Naivedya, Patram, Pushpam, Palam, Toyam, we saw that yesterday. If you offer it to the Lord with love and accept it, which is called as Prasada, Prasada means mercy, then these things won't affect. But those who want to go back to God and want to get out of the cycle of birth and death, they'll actually eat food which is offered to the Lord in love. What is the food which is offered to the Lord in love? Sattvic food, whatever we prepare, if you actually prepare the food in a sattvic fashion and then offer it to the Lord, do Naivedya to the Lord saying, thank you, my Lord, for giving all these things. You please accept it first. And then you accept that food, whatever the Lord takes. Such food is considered as prasadam. So when it's prasadam, then this uh, three hours category is not actually applicable. So you can actually take it. That's why in Tripati prasadam you get, you can actually even take after one week. It is not actually considered as spoiled. You can actually take that and that's actually going to purify us little by little if you keep eating every day like that. 
right? So that's actually the foot in the mode of modes of different uh, different uh, aspect. Any questions? I think I wanted to give some time for question answers. Um, so um, before actually um, ending the session, I want to actually touch upon something. We actually covered most of the aspect, little little. There there is the wealth of information in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, but at the end of the day, as I said, the Bhagavad Gita is driving all of us to get out of the cycle of birth and death. That's actually the goal. And how do we do that? Is actually the glimpse of that is actually given in the Bhagavad Gita. There are other scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, which actually talks about how do you really actually pick up and then follow it. We'll see that in, the, in tomorrow's session. In tomorrow's contents, it's going to be very simple. We'll actually talk about the conclusion, which is the 18th chapter. A very, very important shlokas are there, a couple of shlokas, um, very important, which actually says, if you come and tell me I have no clue about what you're talking, just follow that particular instruction. It's good enough. You'll get to the conclusion. Then how do I attain success? We have heard all these things. How do I practice or how do I do it in my daily life? Arjuna was in the war field. Okay, 18 days, he did everything and went. Oh, is that true? No, actually he followed it in his life. So how do we follow it in our circumstances today when actually I'm tightrope walk? I'm, I'm actually really struggling between my family, work, uh, my health, everything together. How do I balance it? Right. So we'll try to understand that portion. And also introduced to the Harinam Sankirtan, which is actually the Yuga Dharma. Um, we'll talk about what is the Yuga Dharma for this age called Kali Yuga. We'll talk about the different ages, which is actually there. And finally, we'll actually touch upon a little bit of what is there in Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavad Gita is actually the preliminary study. Bhagavatam is the postgraduate study. And then there is higher uh, scriptures which are there for somebody who is really interested to go back to the spiritual world. So what are those contents? What do they really con uh, contain? So we'll actually touch upon that. So I just want to actually um, end here and then open up for questions. I'm hoping actually I'm on time. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me see if they have, let me stop my sharing. Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll take questions if there anybody. Um, um, <clears throat> Ashwin Madhi, can you actually unmute uh, people? They can actually, they can um, ask questions if they have any questions. Can they unmute themselves, Mataji? I've given the access for people to unmute themselves. Ashwini Mataji, are you muted? Oh, yes, Prabhuji. No, I'm asking if can you actually allow people to actually unmute and ask whatever they want to ask. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of information for, for anybody to actually see them. It looks like actually the, it's a completely a lot of new things that we're actually hearing and learning right now. Um, I have actually not, I have not seen these things and I really don't know whether what I'm talking is correct or not. You may be wondering like that. The best thing that you can do is Paramatma is there in your heart. You be truthful. You actually ask the Lord, what is actually the ultimate truth? Please guide me to that. That one thing is actually sufficient because Bhagavatam actually explains like Paramatma is there waiting for us. When will actually come back to me? So ask the question, the Lord himself will actually guide us to that right path. Right. So um, just be in the open mind. Don't actually, um, um, what do you call, uh, don't be too much paranoid or um, bogged down by your own thoughts. I have been following these things for such a long time. You're coming and telling me something else. Um, how do I believe what you're telling is correct or not? Right now, we may not be able to understand why, because we are not exposed to that, right? Uh, we are really not exposed to us. We, if we actually had been trained from our childhood in the Gurukula system about the truth of life, then we wouldn't be actually have been in this kind of uh, uh, situation. Because we actually are suddenly actually trying to hear all these things, we are very confused, like how will life change for me and things like that. And then, I mean, I don't want to actually change right now. All these things actually will disturb us, but you should understand if you really want to actually get out of the cycle of birth and death, you have to act upon it for sure. Um, it's not about who you worship. It's about, um, first of all, understanding who are you. Don't, don't think about whom you're going to worship. First thing is who are you? Understand that first. When you understand that who am I, then the question about what is the next step will actually start. If it's, if it's I'm the body, then you actually pick up anybody and then do whatever you want to do. But if you are a spirit soul, you are a spiritual being, that means, do I actually really belong to this material world? 
not something else. So that question will come. Then you should actually talk about that question, understand that. That's the easiest way to really uh, um, go to the right path. Um, don't be bogged down because I'm, I've been I've been actually born in this particular family and then we have been worshipping this person. I'm not asking you to actually change that at all. Stay there in that because all these devatas and devis are all actually uh, devotees of the Supreme Lord. Uh, but they're all actually in the Karma Kanda section. They're all staying within the Karma Kanda section to help us continue this life nicely. Um, they'll only help us. They don't actually um, tell us the truth. Nobody actually has come and told us the truth. Lord Shiva has not given any scripture telling us I'm not the body, I'm the soul. Uh, this is the truth, these are the things. Nobody, um, no Devi has come and told all these things in person. There are books which are written about them, which glorify them. But nobody has come and told us personally, like Eda Eda Hi Dharmasya Glani Bhavati Bharata. Nobody. Who, for example, we should understand one thing very simple. Um, we have heard this creation, annihilation, and maintenance. Right, Brahmaji is a creator, Lord Shiva is a destroyer, and maintenance is actually Vishnu. Now, the question that we should ask is um, which is the most toughest work to do? <laughs> it's actually not the creation part, it's the maintenance part. It's very tough to actually maintain. So, that's the reason he comes, he takes a lot of um, what do you call interest to come back and put things on path again. Again and again, he comes and then does that. And when he actually set it up, then again, after some time, it'll, it'll, it'll go to the reverse direction, it'll go in the wrong direction. He has to do it, or somebody else has to actually come, and then um, somebody means some of his servants will actually come, and then like some of the acharyas, like Ramanuj Charya, Madhva Charya, uh, Shankara Charya, somebody will actually come and set the society in proper direction. Again, they'll they'll go back mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions? No questions. That means either uh, either everything is very clear, or it's just bouncing on head saying, "Wow, there's too much of information." I'm Kamakshi Shivakumar from Coimbatore. Hare Krishna Mataji, thank Hare you for joining. Yes. Actually, yes. I wanted to ask you about when I am just praying to Lalita Kameshwari every day. So mm -hmm. when you are, after hearing to this, I am uh, I am a lover of uh, reading Bhagavata. Okay. Always read it. Okay. So, so I wanted to understand whether to switch over or anything like that, but you have given the answer already. Yes, don't switch over anything. See, I, the only thing you need to actually do, Mataji, is that uh, please uh, pray to Lalita, please pray to her and say, please guide me to the right path. Uh, what is ultimate truth? Please guide me. I really want to know the real path or the real goal of life, goal of my existence. They will definitely actually take you to the right path. There's no doubt about it because nobody asks these questions because the Devatas are like um, ministers, right? Uh, they are like people, they have powers. <laughs> And they try to help us in whatever we want. Our desires have to be fulfilled. When you develop desires, desires, material desires have to be fulfilled. Yes. Because we don't have an understanding about spiritual nature, no? Mm. So if you actually have a, if you knew from day one that you are a spiritual being and your goal is like this, then you would have had spiritual desires to actually fulfill. Spiritual okay. desire means nothing. Just serve the Lord is actually a spiritual desire. Mm. Since we are not trained like that, we have been going, what would we ask? keep our family happy we don't want yes. to think about harm harming others we never actually pray like that what do we ask keep our family happy so that everything is okay everything is happiness and then we have a simple life that's what actually we pray yeah. is that wrong it is not wrong but mm -hmm. actually knowing everything the truth why would you want to ask for something uh, um, which is uh, not going to be useful eternally because you have to change your body when you change your body you don't know what body you will get next yeah. and then uh, Right, so ask the ask the question about the truth of life. Mm -hmm. Then they will actually definitely guide because they are not actually ordinary personalities. Devi is actually very powerful, and then she will definitely guide you to the right path. Yes, thank you. And, thank you and along with that, chant Hare Krishna mantra also because that's yeah, yeah, because that I am doing. Yes. yes. Then you will he, he the Lord will definitely lead you to the right direction for okay. sure. Then you are hmm? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes. yes. Any other questions anybody has wanted to actually share something? Um, if you actually started understanding something, you are not aware of it, you can always share. Um, that's actually be useful for everyone else also. Um, Thanks, uh, Prabhuji. Uh, myself, yeah. Minakshi Sundra. Mm -hmm. I just have one question. In Rama yeah. and I, PC, uh, Rama uh, worships Shiva, right? Correct. In Rameshwaram. So that's yes. what we saw a temple there. Yeah, so how do we true. relate that 
but uh, if you could explain that would be helpful sure sure so um, we have to understand that Ra lord ram actually appeared uh, ram is non different from krishna right it's one of the avatars of uh, the supreme lord uh, he came right because some people like ram see krishna is not the only supreme lord okay uh, he is adi purusha definitely yeah. but he expands into yeah, no, different yeah. forms like rama yeah. Nasima, Varaha, like that. So if you worship Varaha Dev or Rama, it's as good as worshiping Krishna only. They are not different, right? It's just a different form, different flavors because the devotee is one like that. So Rama, when he appeared, he appeared for a particular reason again, right? Eda, Eda, Hidharmasya. Who was the demonic person that time? Ravana, right? Ravana was creating a rakas and then Ravana had a boon from Brahma that no, um, I should not be killed by a human being. Right? He actually asked a lot of, uh, I, I'm sorry, he, he, he said, I should not be killed by um, devatas and, and things of that nature. Right? Uh, so Rama appeared like an ordinary human being. And whenever a Kshatriya, um, in the Vedas it's mentioned, he's in the material world and he has to go for war. Is war a spiritual activity? No. War is actually again a material activity. And if you want to fulfill material desires and of winning and things like that, you need to worship the owner of that particular activity who is lord shiva lord shiva actually is very powerful devi also is very powerful on the request of agastya rishi rama worships um ram i mean sorry lord shiva in rameshwaram before going to the war saying that i want to be successful in this mission can ram not win on his own he can win but he is actually setting uh, an example for all the kings how should they behave in this world Right? A king is supposed to be a uh, representative of God in the world because we actually look towards the king and then do an activity. Now, if Ram actually had displayed, okay, he's the supreme lord and doesn't care to worship Lord Shiva and then go, then Ravana would say, you are the supreme lord, that's why you killed me. So that boon would have been void. So he had to behave like a human being, ordinary human being. Um, and then he worshipped Lord Shiva and Lord Shiva was very, very happy. Actually, there are... There are uh, um, difference of opinion between the Acharyas because in the Valmiki Ramayana, this episode is not actually there. That Lord Shiva and uh, Rama actually, uh, Rama worship Lord Shiva is not there. But in the Kamba Ramayana version, this is actually there. Nevertheless, there's nothing wrong because Lord Shiva is not an ordinary person also. Lord Shiva is called Vaishnava Anamata Shambhu. He's one of the greatest devotees. Sometimes Krishna worships Narada Muni because Narada Rishi is actually a very great devotee of uh, Vishnu. Krishna worships him saying that, but that doesn't mean that Narada Rishi is the Supreme Lord. Right. Um, in this case, Rama worshipped Lord Shiva only because of the reason he had to go and fight. And he was setting example for all the kings to follow. This is how you have to behave like the king. Right. That's the reason he does that. Um, and there's nothing wrong in that. Right. It doesn't mean that because Rama worshipped uh, Lord Shiva. Uh, so um, Lord Shiva becomes a supreme and Rama is not actually the supreme. No. It's all drama. It's all a lot of things actually happen in the Shastras like for us. They look like, okay, this person is better than that person because he's worshipping like that. Uh, but actually, it's all drama that they play. Uh, so that sometimes people get bewildered. Oh, see, drama is actually doing this. That means Lord Shiva is supreme. Accept it, it's fine. There's no harm in that. But chant Hare Krishna, slowly you'll start understanding the truth. Because if you follow the Yuga Dharma, then everything actually falls in place. Does it help? Because you're setting an example. Maria de Purushottama is setting an example for all the, all the other kings to follow what they should do. That's the reason, actually, uh, Rama worshipped Lord Shiva. Yeah, Neglect. thanks. I think, it, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I think it's okay. useful. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, yeah, any, any other questions? So tomorrow's session, don't miss it. It's going to be very useful um, because you'll understand, okay, knowing all these things is like diagnosis. If you go to your doctor, the doctor actually checks everything and then finally says, uh, uh, okay, you have this disease and then you actually are having these symptoms, see this paining that is paining and all these things. So he's found out that disease. But then you need the medicine now to cure yourself. You need the medicine and the diet. Like you need to actually have some food specifically, something you have to avoid, and then you need to take some medicine to get cured. So far, we have discussed only the problems. We have only discussed the roga. <clears throat> we have not actually discussed the solution. So we'll talk about the solution tomorrow because that's actually an important session. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, just want to tell you one thing. Sure. So in the in the corporate where normally we talk about three things: mm. passion, purpose, and uh, priorities. Correct. 
so yes if you look at this uh, so we had to be less passionate towards uh, our achievements in the uh, means our normal life so maybe that would be covered tomorrow i guess right yes yes see um, the lord does not say um, you become lazy see understand one thing krishna would have actually told arjuna arjuna you sit back and relax i will drive the chariot for you i have the sudarshan chakra i will actually chop off all of them you enjoy and sit and relax he didn't do that he said tarma tasma sarveshu kaleshu maha manasmara yudhya cha is that fight means work hard see we have a misunderstanding so far what we are trying to do is we are working hard for us but what krishna is asking us to do is work hard for me uh, that is krishna so how do we do that that's actually a trick that's actually the thing that we'll start learning from tomorrow it's not just one day i can tell you you will learn everything because in every aspect we have to see how to do it for food whatever food we are actually preparing we offer it to the lord and take it then there's no sinful reactions in that food even if you actually had killed a, even vegetarian skill plants right some sometimes actually you see some small um, worm inside and we actually chop it off somehow unknowingly it dies right you get karma for it you get bad karma because the, the worm was enjoying life inside that uh, particular uh, vegetable and you kill that vegetable or the, the worm sorry so who will take the karma for killing that worm you only have to take it so then will you become a worm one day and then get killed yes that's true that's true so that's the reason actually we offer everything to the lord and then accept prasadam because when you actually offer something to the lord then the lord will accept all the karmic reactions for that and he doesn't get affected because he's supreme uh, then we get prasadam and you are not affected like that so in every activity we have to understand how it is and it takes some time for us because we are not trained in this but we can get trained in that on a weekly basis or something we can we can think about we'll talk about that tomorrow prabhu but thank you so much for asking that question yeah thank you prabhu ji no problem so the one i quest i see another question here from paridi goel mata ji uh hari krishna guru ji i worshiped lord shiva always like a friend mentor like a guru but at the same time i worship lord krishna as well after reading gita i feel what should i do now because they both keep worshiping each other yes very nice question about this what you can really do is you can continue to worship lord shiva but worship lord shiva as a um greatest devotee of krishna vaishnava naam eta shambhu the greatest vaishnava you can ever think of is lord shiva because he is actually so exalted um that vishnu himself is so happy to actually see him um and then be with them right so worship him just change the attitude saying that lord shiva is actually the greatest vaishnava and, and then uh, krishna is actually or vishnu is actually the supreme lord in that mentality actually worship both of them there is no harm they both will actually both help uh, you progress towards us yeah but that's a nice question so we'll we'll start actually understanding all these things because um worshiping all these personalities uh, in the material world with aspect of material desire it's not actually good when you actually worship the same personalities asking them i want to go back to the spiritual world please help me that's a lord there's no there's no harm in that but eventually they themselves will tell you some of things will start happening in your life saying that you worship krishna only directly because we were meant for giving you um this material desire fulfillment we are not meant for giving you the boon of going back because we ourselves have not gone there yet we are still there here so you better actually worship him so you will start understanding these aspects slowly but don't change anything in life just add chanting hare krishna that's all it is so only will you will naturally start feeling that yes, i should do this and you respect all these devatas so much that you don't feel like saying that oh krishna is the supreme oh, i don't I, i don't want to see devi at all lord shiva is supreme no we we'll feel so much respectful that all these personalities are serving the supreme so wonderfully thankless job they are doing actually um uh, in taking care of everyone in this material world otherwise the material world would have been a messy place totally messy place um yeah so so we'll become um more uh, qualified or more happy to see all these personalities yeah and in in fact you will be able to see lord shiva or lord brahma some day in your life when you actually really when you're going back to the spiritual world this mentioned bhagavatam that if someone is completely purified and he's going back to the spiritual world uh, you will be able to see these personalities and then you can you can really get the audience of seeing these personalities yeah whomever you want to see you can see in the, in the, in this world hope that helps mathi Yeah, but but please stand Hare Krishna. That's actually the the most important aspect. 
and read Bhagavad Gita every day. Little, little, you read one shloka, you read every day. Within a year's time or within two years, you'll know so much um, that you don't need to really, um, you will not be worried. You'll feel more happy. Actually, I've, I've learned so much in, in the, over the years. And you'll be, feel very peaceful also. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I can tell. Okay. If there are no questions, we can actually uh, end. If you have any questions over the days or anything like that, you can message me. I'm actually available on WhatsApp. Is there any questions yeah. coming up there? Uh, good evening, Prabhuji. This is Swarnavalli. Yes, Mataji, tell us. Uh, um, just one question. Some of our Christian friends make fun of Hindu gods, like they say, mm. your gods are enjoying life like normal, ordinary person with two wives, like Krishna's concert or mm. uh, Shri Devi, <laughs> Bhu Devi, Lord Murga's concert is Valli Devane. So, what's behind this? That's it. I mean, nice question. I mean, see, sometimes, I mean, it's not and that. And you're not able to reply. I was not able to reply back to this question. That's why I'm, I'm asking you this. Yeah, yeah. See, because um, see, in the material world, we all want to actually enjoy life, right? The enjoyment in the material world, as such, even Krishna actually accepts that, uh, is actually sex life. I'm uh, being very blunt about it because Krishna himself calls that word this in the in the Bhagavad Gita. And, and interestingly, the attraction between male and female is there in every living entity in the material world, including uh, the topmost personality, Brahmaji, to the bottom most ant or anything. Every, everything actually has a male and female combination. <clears throat> and actually, the devatas actually are enjoying. They are, they are part of the heavenly planets. And the heavenly planets is all meant for enjoyment. They have done a lot of pious activities. A living entity like you and me have become Skanda or Ganeshji. That's actually the Shastric opinion. But because they have done so much of pious activity, they actually have got that, that kind of uh, body and they are actually enjoying uh, life like that. And unfortunately, the, uh, the people in the Christianity or, or the Islamism, they don't have higher truths about life. Um, they are all about, uh, okay, don't sleep with your mother, uh, take a bath on this. It's a very low level kind of information. They don't even talk about soul. Krishna is actually talking about soul and who is actually the supreme and things of that nature. They can't actually um, understand and appreciate these things. So whenever somebody actually asks you these kind of questions, you can always tell in a joking way, you can always say that they know, they know better ways of enjoying life in this material world. Um, that, that's why actually they, are, they have the powers and they're actually uh, doing it. And then, but ultimate truth is, that's why actually many people, because they don't understand who God is, because if you see in the Christianity and, and the Islamism, they say there's only one God. When you come to this one, um, what do you call the so-called Hindu religion, you like the 33 crore demigods are there, are gods, what people think. People get confused, like, who is really God, right? Um, so it's really tough about it. So that's why you don't even actually have to bother about that. Don't even try to go and then tell them this is what it is, this is what it is. No point, actually. Uh, I would actually give an example. Somebody actually asked me this question. Somebody used to ask me this question. I used to tell them they know a better way of enjoying life. We don't know how to do it, and it's not easy to do it, right? Um, one time, actually, uh, somebody asked me this question. I couldn't answer this question since, like, if Krishna actually asks, um, you said that we are created by Krishna, we are created by God, and we actually have same qualities like God. If God actually has, uh, <clears throat> um, um, if God can marry sixteen thousand uh, princesses, why can't I marry two or three and dance with them? So I was stumped. I didn't know what the answer is. What should I give? So I went and asked my spiritual master. So he told me, uh, if you marry one, you will know what are the difficulties you will face in life. Um, but actually speaking, it is not that God wants all these personalities. They want God. Who doesn't want, which beautiful lady doesn't want God to be her husband? Definitely, if there's a chance like that, I will not accept. Vishnu will not accept. Krishna will accept. That's a position. God really in the absolute sense can ac actually accept anybody as his consort. They love him so much. That's why I actually accept him. Right? So these are actually very uh, nice questions asked. These are there in Bhagavatam. The answers are there in Bhagavatam. The 10th canto wherein how Narakasura tortured all the princes and then the olden days if the lady stays outside the house for one night, nobody will marry them. So um, this fellow, this Narakasura kept them in the prison and they were all praying to Krishna, please come and take us. Nobody freed all of them. Now, all the 16,000 princes who were captured by Narakasura prayed to Krishna saying that if you go back, my parents won't accept me. So I said, what do you want me to do? You can please accept me. You know our heart are very pure for you. Please accept us. 
He said, yes, please come. So he gave one palace for each one of them. Not that all of them are staying in the same place. And he expanded to marry all of them. God can do, absolute truth can actually do anything which is inconceivable for us. We cannot understand, but he can do it. Um, that's the reality, right? Then, then, um, then they told, uh, um, I mean, Guru, Guru, Guru Maharaj actually told me this very interesting thing, saying that uh, there is a successful man, a successful woman behind uh, uh, every man. So they asked a the question like this, saying that who is the who is the successful person behind the devotees? Uh, actually, Srimati Radharani, Krishna's consort, is the one who actually blesses. Because Srimati Radharani or Lakshmi Devi or Sita, they bless us. Uh, we are able to serve Krishna or Rama like that. Otherwise, it's very difficult to actually serve them because Krishna doesn't want all these people who are coming and asking for, you give me this, give me that. He says, go and ask the demigods. Um, yeah, you able to hear me? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. I understood. Yeah. I can okay. reply back to such. Sure. Thanks, Pandi Mataji. Thank Okay, I think Ashwini Mataji, um, we should end the session here. I don't want actually everyone to stay here and then take all their time, but I'm available. You can always message me on WhatsApp if you need any answers to be given or any help you need. We'll actually meet tomorrow again and understand a little more about how do I practice this at home uh, without making much changes in lifestyle, right? Attitude has to be changed. How do we do that? We'll see. Okay, Mataji, Ashwini Mataji. Okay, we'll stop through. recording. I will leave. I will uh, end the session. Oh, you only have to end the session, I guess. Ah, okay, Thanks, Madhya. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.